Hallelujah. Shall we all lift our hands and bless the Lord this morning? And let everything that has breath go ahead and bless him this morning. Give him the praise. He commands such in his word. So we're on 50 verses and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Somebody is thanking him wherever you are from the back and the middle, the front. Lift your voice. Bless the Lord. And everything within us must give God praise. Yes, thank him in understanding. Thank him where? Thank him in the spirit. Father, we give you the praise this morning. You have called and we have appeared before you. Blessed is that man, that woman that chooses to approach unto you. That you may bless him and satisfy him with the goodness of the house. We thank you this morning. In this end of the month, Thanksgiving of service, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Father, we bless you this morning. From our hearts, we thank you. For everything that we represent, we give you the praise. Yes, lift your voice and show God is hearing you. Yes, thank him. It's a good thing to give time. And you can supply good things in your life. Go ahead and ask God to speak to you right now. There is a word for you. You are not coming empty. You are glow going from this mountain with your word. Going loaded. Say, Father, speak to me, your voice. Let your voice upon the waters of your word. Thunder expressly to me this morning. Help me locate my own this morning from your word. Somebody is asking. We give you the praise. Father, glorify your word in our lives. Be that magnified in Jesus' glorious name. We have given time. Come and give Jesus a big hand of praise. As you shout glory, please be seated. Glory to God. I want to seize this opportunity this morning to appreciate God and his servant for this wonderful privilege to stand before God's people and bring God's word. Thank you, sir. I pray you'll be blessed today in Jesus' name. Understanding the wonders of divine direction. This has been the teaching series in all our Sunday services this month, September, and today. We'll be concluding on that series, Understanding the Wonders of Divine Direction, part four. God, through his servant, has been exposing to us the vital benefits and wonders of divine direction. What is divine direction? Divine direction is following God's leading. Into his plans for our lives. In order to fulfill our glorious and enviable destiny. Divine direction is following God's leading. Into his plans for our lives. In order to fulfill our glorious and next level's destinies. Glory to God. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the scripture says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, see the Lord of hosts, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. This is God speaking to us. I know the thoughts. In other words, I've already arranged your destiny for you. I've predetermined and predestined you already. But to arrive at my glorious plan for you, allow me to lead you. That's what God is saying. Let me lead you into my glorious 
plan for your life and destiny. An expected end. Not an accidental end. A very calculated end. You will end well. <laughs> Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said one time to Peter and his brother James, Andrew. He said, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I will make you. Follow me. So it is following the leadings of the Lord. Anywhere he leads. You know that song? Anywhere you lead me, I will go. For you are the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, my life is for your glory. I pray, and somewhere here, you, you, you will end gloriously. Now, God's servant once defined divine direction as the ways of God revealed to the believers. The divine direction is the ways of God revealed to the believers. Psalm 16, 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy and is right here. Pleasures forevermore. God will show you the path of life. But you have to acknowledge that you do not know the path of life. That all that you can see is all that you know. But what lies beyond that, between the, your eyesight, you do not know. The ways of God. It's very important to know the ways of God. You need to bother yourself with the ways of God. To know it. Because it will make the difference. The journey of life. Isaiah 55 verse 8. God said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. He is the Lord of hosts. So God, God has ways. And so that brings us into the three types of ways this morning. What are the three types of ways? The ultimate and the foremost is the ways of God. Say it me, the ways of God. Psalm 103, verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. God has ways. He said, my ways are not your ways. He has, his, ways are ultimate, his ways are the highways of life. When you follow it, you end well. Again, you will end well. This is so important. What is the type, three types of ways? Number two, the ways of man. Man also has his own ways. And so you find Proverbs 16, 25. So the way, there's a way. A way, not the way. That cement right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Man has his way. But I pray that you will follow the ways of God. Amen. You see in Jeremiah 10, 23, he said, it's not in man. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his ways, his steps. Man at his best capacity is still limited. You are limited. God is unlimited. Everything is limited except God. We must subscribe to the ways of God so that our lives shall not be full of regret. And I know. The third type of way of found in life is the ways of Satan. Satan had his own way. John 10, 5, see? The voice of stranger we did not follow. They will flee from him. That's stranger then bracket is Satan. Satan has his own way. And then we begin to see the end of Satanic way in John 10:10. 10, 10. There is destruction. Destruction. That's the ultimate of Satan's way. It leads to destruction. You shall not be destroyed. Amen. How to locate the ways of God? How? To win there, locate the ways of God. Because it's wisdom to subscribe to the ways of God. We must go to the world. 
have to locate God's way in His Word. God's Psalm will say, God's ways are in His Word. Go to His Word. They are not online. You can't find His way there. Glory to God. He's here. And then we are already in the days where even Baba Lao and Mama Lao will tell you, my friend, follow Jesus. That's the one that can help you. Can help you here again. Hey, glory to God. We must go locate God's ways in this world. John 14, verse 6. Jesus one time said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the way. And then from John 1, 1, you see, is the word. So when you come to God's word, you find his way. And the ways of God are absolutely the profiting. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 7, we say, Lo, I come in the volumes of the books. It is written in the scripture concerning me, concerning me and my ways. One who not the ways of God, come word of God. May you find this way. And may you abide by his way. Isaiah chapter number 55, verse 9. So as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Again, you will find these ways in the name of Jesus Christ. God's ways are higher. Say with me, God's ways are higher. They are higher than my ways. Amen. How to locate the ways of God? We must ask God in prayers. We must ask God in prayers. That's the number two way to locate God's ways. In Exodus 33 verse 13, you find the man Moses pray to God. He said, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, not later, now. Because locating these ways brings an end to all forms of toiling, struggling, struggle, stagnation. He prayed to know the way of God, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is my people. The ways of God. Jeremiah 33, he said, call unto me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Until you call, there is no answer. So answers are product of callings. And you call, when you make your SMS or GSM call, then it's a of answer. So you don't have access to knowing or be shown great things concerning your life and destiny except you call. Somebody will call. Amen. Even today you will call on the Lord. Amen. As I have said to you, verse 21, the scripture said, And you shall hear the word behind you. Their ears shall hear a word behind you. If you pray, if you call, you will hear a word behind you, the word, the voice of God behind you. Saying, This is the way. Work ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn, so the word, the voice of God will compass your life. It will lead you with your compass in life and destiny to fulfill your glorious destiny. Until you call in prayer and then you have access to that voice which will lead you in the way of the Lord. So you must walk in his way. If you will not walk in his way, there is no point calling. Because you need to be wasting his time. And then you know he knows the contents of our hearts. Not working. We'll hear. But if you have checked your heart that you walk, he will hear. God will hear you. Then we say, okay, now turn to the right. Okay, now turn to the left. God will lead you well. In the name of Jesus Christ. So now, what are the redemptive destinies of the believer? Important to understand who we are in Christ. What are the redemptive destinies? Of the believer, so that we will not play Ludo with our life and destiny. Treasure it the way God treasures our lives. And so subscribe to his leadings. We are redeemed to command dominion in every areas of our lives. 
and not to be losers. We are redeemed. Say it me, are redeemed. To command dominion. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are redeemed to command dominion in every area of our lives. Not to be losers. If you find in Psalm 110 verse 2, scripture will say, Thou shalt send forth the rod out of thy ruda, the mist of thy enemy. That's dominion. To rule. Dominion means to rule and to reign in life over situation and circumstances. Not that they are reigning over you. To rule over your enemies. And you agree with me that poverty is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. Stagnation is your enemy. So when you are in dominion, you rule and reign. Life. You will rule and reign. Amen. Ephesians 1 22. He has given us all things under our feet and have put all things. How many things? All things under his feet and gave him to be, be the head over all things for the church. The church, the bracket, the believer. Just put all things under your feet to reign. Not that they are reigning these things. Reigning over you. So you are reigning. You are dominating. You will dominate. What are the redemptive destinies of the believer? We are redeemed unto glory and honor and not shame and reproach. We are redeemed unto glory. And honor and no shame and reproach. You believe that, say loud, amen. amen. Isaiah 61, verse 7. For your shame, now, say this time, you shall have double, double portion, double glory to God, amen. double honor, double glory. Amen. Second Peter, chapter number 1. Verse 3, according as his divine power has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. To the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. Did you see shame and reproach there? He has called you and I to glory and to virtue. Honor, glory, and honor. honor. Virtue there also stands for honor. You must allow these truths to sink in you, dawn in you. Because when light comes, darkness shatters. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Our redemptive destinies has no limits. There are no ceilings to our redemptive destiny in Christ. That's why the scripture in Matthew 11, 11 will say, the least, on the least in this kingdom is greater than the greatest in the Old Testament. Jesus himself made such profound statements in scriptures. Knowing this, therefore, that our destinies has no limits, we must then be guided step by step by the Spirit of God in order to arrive at our destiny. Exodus 33, Exodus chapter number 13, verse 17, 18. He said, and it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them, God led them, they allowed God to lead them. God led them, not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near for God said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. God wants to lead you. You must be willing to submit to his leadings for your life. The leader. God. The leader. And then in verse 18, he said, but God led the people. God led them. He led the people about through the way of the wilderness, of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up and nest out of the land of Egypt. As God leads you, you are coming out of Egypt. Amen. Egypt will present bondage, those situations of life that doesn't glorify Jesus. They are all Egypt. So God leading is profitable. 
not to burden you. He led them out of Egypt through the wilderness to the land of promise. Led them. Again, God will lead you. Cause of misdirection. Cause of misdirection. When you do not allow God to lead you, these are the consequences. Not allowing divine direction. In other words, consequences of following your leading, and leading. Cause of misdirection is a note that no matter how spiritual, experienced, and anointed a believer may be, misdirection can be deadly. No matter how spiritual, no matter how experienced, no matter how calculative you have been, anointed a believer can be, or may be, misdirection can be deadly. This is very important. You will never add grown divine direction. Very important. May God continue to lead you till you fulfill your glorious days on earth. God somehow shared a story about a big ministry who was so popular in those days that they used helicopter to distribute flyers. But one wrong step, everything became once upon a time. May you not take that step that will squander your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 42, verse 24. The scripture says, Who gave Jacob for his spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned, because we didn't follow, they didn't follow rather. He's leading for their life. They got to a point, they say, hey, we have tried, it's enough. Lord, we can lead ourselves from here. And so, but they will not walk in his ways, neither be they obedient unto his law. Can't and grow divine direction. Remain there. Remain committed. It's leading for your life. And so you find in those scriptures, they suffered loss. They were robbed. Acts 27, 22. If you follow divine leadings for your life, he said, for you, there shall be no loss. I am a born again. Amen. And also, not following his lady for lies, one can also go into bondage, slavery, and undue hardship. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. Why is Israel spoiled? Jeremiah 2, 14. Scripture says, is Israel a servant? And I was slave. Is he a born slave? Why is he spoiled? Why is he into captivity? God was lamenting in that scripture. This is not the destiny of Israel. What is happening here? He has disconnected from divine leadings. You will not disconnect. If you follow the valley, they are according to Isaiah 190. See, if they are willing and obedient to his leading, they shall eat the good of the land. Every land. In this land, you eat the good of this land of Abuja. Now, what are the wonders of divine direction? What are the wonders of divine direction? It quenches all fears. When God is leading and you are following, fear is abated. The leading of God does not come with fear. One of the characteristic factors is leading. There is no fear whatsoever. And that's when Isaiah 41, verse 10, he says, Fear not! I will lead you. I am with thee. Be not dismayed. You know, not be hopeless. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. When God is leading, you, are in, you know that he will strengthen you. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then if God be for you, where is the Satan that can be against you? This is his verdict for you. If you are committed to follow him, there is no like hopeless, there is no like depletion of strength. There is no, nothing like uh, defeat. He said, I will help thee. God will help you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow his leading. Follow it. When he was leading Moses in Exodus 3, 10, he said, go to Pharaoh, I'm with you. Go, go and tell him, Pharaoh, let my people go. Who can stand before Pharaoh and, uh, and still live to tell the stories? He was the fiercest man in his time. Because he and me and of Hitler put together. But because the leading of God was with Moses, he went to the Pharaoh. That's any form of fleeing or something like that. Pharaoh, let my people go. Then, that one thing we are saying. Fear not, fear not. Every atom of fear around your life disappears in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonders of divine direction. It secures supernatural victory. You will never be defeated again. Second Samuel chapter number 5, verse 19. Moses, uh, David, rather, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto Moses, or David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines all your enemies into your hand. You see, the voice came, the voice of direction. David understand or understood the place of divine direction, and so he asked God. God led him. If God had not led him, he would have suffered more depression and losses. So he asked God, should I go? Will you be with me? And God said, I'll be with you. Go. Because you have asked me now, go. So when you ask, wait for reply from God. Psalm 66, verse 5. Psalm 66, verse 5. The scripture says, come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. God will do terrible things in your life. So important. What are the wonders of divine duration? Keeps the believers ever refreshed. No stress, no strain, no fatigue, no worn out, worn out. It keeps the believer ever refreshed. No form of stress, strain, worn out or worn out. What God speaks in Psalm 23, verse 3, he said, he restored my soul. What he said, he will refresh your soul as you follow his leading through the path of righteousness. If you look at God's servant today, God finds no stress. You don't find any stress strain. Following the leadings, you are refreshed. God will refresh your life. All this struggling, stress here and there, strain. No more be necessary. So that you are 80, you'll be looking like 40. No stress, no strain. All your veins and as you should relax. Glory to God. His ways are ways of pleasantness. Proverbs 3.17. Not pleasure. Ways of God. Ways are ways of pleasantness. And all are paths. Are peace. Not trouble. What are the wonders of divine direction? Lastly. Guarantees next levels in life. Guarantees are next levels in life. Proverbs 418. Proverbs 418. Parts of the just is a shiny light. That shine it more and more onto the perfect day. Next levels. There's always a next levels in life. God is leading. He leads you step by step into your next levels. What is next levels? Next level simply means to move higher, upward, and forward in life. Next levels is to move higher, upward, not downward. And forward in life. God said to Moses, Exodus 14, 50, he said, say to the people that they go forward. Go forward. I say to you, go forward. Amen. Go forward. That's next level. Go to your next levels. You shall experience next level blessings from now. Huh? 
scripture examples of men of scriptures. I express next level. Abraham. I express next level. Genesis 12, 1 to 4. God called Abraham. Abraham, get thee out of father's house out of thy country and from thy kindred. And from thy father's house unto a land I will show you. And verse 4. And so Abraham departed. And, verse, and by Genesis chapter number 13, verse 2. Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. He entered into his next levels. Wealth. You are entering your own. Another example is the widow of Zarephath, 1 Kings chapter number 17, verse 8 to 15. Elisha came to him, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 15. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get down to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded the widow there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to Zarephath, to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And then you look at 15, the last verse. 15, you now say. Verse number 15 of the same chapter. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. A widow that had nothing tangible to lay hold on. All she had was just a cake, a flour, and a water just to make a cake for her and her child to eat and die. Because of the days of famine, drought, no rainfall. Then she had a counter with the prophet of God. And from there, she moved to her next levels of abundance. That's over verse 15. You see, 15. It says, she, she and he, as a son, and a house, a house will be in many days. Abundance. God is bringing someone into the realm of abundance and supernatural supplies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, what are the areas to experience next levels? area of our spiritual life. Luke 18, 1. Spoke a parable unto them. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. You are going to express next level in your prayer life. <laughs> so that you that could not pray a reason of the next level you are receiving, you begin to pray more Amen. and more. For 5 minutes to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 20 minutes, to 30 minutes, 1 hour to 2 hours, to 3 hours, in the name of Jesus. That's next level. Even in your soul winning, you're going to experience next levels. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you and ordained you that you go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit you remain. As ever you ask the Father in my name, give it to you. Next level, your soul winning endeavors. Begin to win more souls to Christ. And begin to experience that. Kingdom and devil. Areas of, to experience next levels. The two. Our, spirit, our physical life. The area of our physical life. In Psalm 75 verse 7. The world says. But God seeks precisely. Because the judge put it down one, he set it up another. Verse 6. A promotion coming neither from the east nor the west nor from the south. Next level of your physical life. The word God is saying, He will promote you as a form of next levels. And also, you begin to express business and career exploits. Daniel 11 32 say, uh, You shall do exploit. The people that don't know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits in life. Physical next levels. You are going to experience it in the name of Jesus Christ. What more? There are 48, 17. Some other person will begin to experience next levels in their profits. You need to make millions in profits. Sit. I am the Lord. As I have 48, verse 17, I am the Lord that teacher thee to profit. That will be your next levels. Either day, by the way, thou shouldest go. 
Thirdly, finally, area to experience next levels in our financial life. What is it? Psalm 1 verse 3. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall know wither. Your life will know wither. Your finances will know wither. And whatsoever he do it, shall prosper. You will prosper financially in the name of Jesus Christ. That's so very vital to John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. God is saying you will prosper. You will express next level's prosperity. From thousands, you move to millions. To tens of millions and hundreds of millions in the name of Jesus Christ. The conclusion is this. As we decide and commit our lives to following God's leadings for our lives, every day, we will not stop experiencing next level's blessings. And that's in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 3.18. For we all, with open face, beholding us in the glass, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Rise to your feet. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Give him thanks. I'd like you to go ahead now and begin to thank him in tongues. Everybody lift your voice. Raise your hands to the Lord and begin to bless him. Begin to thank him. Give him thanks for that's your own word that have come. Begin to bless the Lord. For light and revelation you have received your own in particular. Give God thanks for it. Give God thanks for it. Give God thanks for it. I shall not be lost. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for your next level's experience. Go ahead and bless him more and more. It's a good God. It's a gracious God. You are thanking him. Begin to receive grace to apply your words that have come to you. Grace to apply scriptures in practical terms. To express unending next levels. You are taking it now. You are receiving it now. Grace to practice your word, Lord. Free soul and body. Ramosh clear now. We take it now. We receive it now. We receive it now. Rande da bosh. Oh Lord, we take grace. We take grace. We take grace. I see. Grace. Thank you, Jesus. We give the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You are here this morning. You want to give your life to Jesus. Surrender your hearts. This is so vital. Next level is not for everybody. The believers. For the child of God. You want all your sins forgiven. You want your name written in the Lamb Book of Life. Or back in the Lamb Books of Life. This morning, God is ready to save you. If you are ready to surrender fully this time. You want to surrender to his leading for your life. Place your right hand on your heart. And lift up your left hand wherever you are now. Standing. Your right hand on your heart now. Lift up your left hand. Now say after me in faith. Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I receive you. As my Lord. And as my Savior. Jesus. I believe. You died for me. You rose again. On the third day for my salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please come. I'd like you to come to the front. Yes, please. Usha, help me bring them. Please come to the front. I want God's to pray on you right now. Please come. Please come. Let the sisters start coming to the front. Come on now. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. This is the greatest of all. Come to the front. Come to the front. Yes, let's start coming. Start coming. Jesus is waiting for you at the altar area right now. Wherever you are from the back and the front at the middle, please start coming to the front. Come now. Come now. Don't hold yourself back. Stop struggling with the Holy Ghost. Please come. Please come. Please come. Church clap some more. The more you clap, the more they are encouraged to come to the front. Yes, make the hand bigger. They are clapping for you. Come, 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 come. Yes, please give them a chance. Let the sister come to the Jesus. Come now. Come now. Come now. Keep coming. Keep coming. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.